year, the Developmental Disabilities Association celebrates 60 years of innovation. The Infant Development Program received a surge of referrals while funding remained unchanged. In spite of this, we received 328 new referrals and provided 4,111 contacts to 903 families. IDP also continues to be a recognized community partner in research with UBC's Human Early Learning Program. IDP looks forward to continued lobbying for increased funding to meet the needs of families who are waiting for critical early intervention services. Child and Youth Services continue to offer both part-time and full-time inclusive care, goal planning for families with children who have special needs, teacher training in the Seeds of Empathy program, and 19,500 lunches per year. Located in the heart of the Olympic Village, DDA's Creekside Child Development Centre opened in 2011 as one of the largest child care centres in Vancouver. Our Child and Youth Department strongly values the partnerships between the Vancouver Parks Board and City of Vancouver for their support to DDA. Although DDA withstood pressure from Community Living BC to close more group homes, they did decommission some of our residential spaces throughout the year in an attempt to save money. Early in 2011, DDA responded to CLBC's request to provide two term certain crisis response placements within our residential service structure that offered us an opportunity to assess, treat and plan for people in crisis. This cost-effective service also maximizes the use of community partners, generic and specialized services by accessing support for clinical services and therapies. Touchscreen computers and tablets were introduced to group homes and day programs to enhance group learning, social interaction, therapy, and personal networks. Residential clients continued to participate in community events, host fundraisers, and deliver meals to seniors. Respite Services received 25 new referrals this past fiscal year and provided services and support to over 150 families who required skilled caregivers. Jobs West successfully found paid employment for 12 clients and placed another 11 job seekers into volunteer opportunities to build work experience. Starworks continues to provide direct employment opportunities to 45 individuals who have barriers to employment. Another 122 participants completed 500 volunteer hours at 47 community sites each month. The percentage of our families who indicate they are very satisfied with services increased in the last year by 20% in day programs, 33% in childcare, and 29% in respite. In residential services, this rating decreased by 8%, which is likely attributable to funding cuts. EDA provides supports to both children and adults with intellectual disabilities ages newborn to 83. The number of individuals over the age of 60 has increased in recent years, as has the number of young adults. According to our surveys, 45% of respondents work or volunteer, and almost all the adults who we support engage in the activities they want and choose. 96% report that they have enough money to buy the things they want, and 100% indicated that some or all of the time, they can easily get to the places they want. Donation quotas were the highest ever set by Value Village this fiscal year at 6.3 million pounds of cloth and 1.9 million pounds of housewares. Our housewares donations increased from 26.7% of our total pickups to 31.1%. DDT launched a new marketing campaign this year to promote our 100% owned and operated seal so donors could distinguish our mission from that of for-profit bin hosts. Cash for Clothes also had its best year ever. We now own and operate 272 cloth and toy bins, 10 book bins, 40 bottle bins and pick up donations in 18 communities. DDA was honoured with two awards last fiscal year, the City of Vancouver's Access and Inclusion Award and the TechSoup Digital Storytelling Award. We recognised Punjabi as the third most spoken language in our community and translated our website to Punjabi. DDA's own intranet, Starnet, was launched this year to provide a virtual office for staff to interact, learn and communicate. We had another year of financial success and stability at DDA and look forward to many more. The Finance Department continues to go green with an experimental project to convert paper documents into secure, searchable documents. 
We also look forward to expanding our current ComVita payroll and HR programs to produce readily available information electronically. Our Human Resources Department maintained programs and services throughout the year, which included the Early Intervention Program, Feeling Better Now, Grievance Tracking, and Incident Reporting Systems. Essential Learning, an online learning system, was launched for all staff and 2,500 hours of training were provided in this first year. We will continue to hire and retain the best staff, foster learning and professional development, and build productive relationships with the BCGEU. We will continue to celebrate our 60th anniversary throughout the year. Our goals for these celebrations include providing community awareness of DDA's history and current services, bolstering community development, encouraging families to get involved in DDA for the future of their child, increasing membership, educating the public about the trust and foundation, and most importantly, promoting the abilities of the people we support. On behalf of the Developmental Disabilities Association, I would like to thank our families, clients, staff, and most importantly, our board of directors, particularly our president, John Nielsen. We look forward to celebrating another successful 60 years to come.